Hey everybody, this is Al from El Rey Collection, and I'm here today to continue the um, the series on the top 10 from now, the 1920s. Um, and this is where things get really, really hard. Um, you know, in the 1920s, I typically think Spanish Art Deco beautiful cards, and they are there are a ton of those, and it's really it's really hard because you also get some amazing German issues. Um, you get some uh, fantastic uh, issues out of uh, Argentina, um, you know, in Uruguay. And, you know, and as you would kind of expect, because we kind of transition from the UK being basically the only producer of, of products to some of the other countries that are leading the soccer charge at this point, um, namely Uruguay and Argentina, where, you know, some, obviously Uruguay wins the Olympics in 24 and 28 and, um, and ultimately the first world cup in 1930. But you also get some real key cards of some of those, you know, um, Italian stars that are going to ultimately win the world cup in 34 and 38. So you get some of their rookie cards or early cards that kind of mash together. So you've got this great Spanish, you know, these great Spanish sets. You've got the the coming of age of of the of the Uruguayan team in the twenties, and you've got the budding superstars to come of the nineteen thirties from Italy. So all that makes this really hard, especially with a bunch of you know other great German cards out there especially the Greeling set from 1926 on, uh, which includes some of the greats that played in Eastern Europe um, as well as Germany and Austria. So uh, super, super hard to get a top 10 list. Um, you know, there's a bajillion honorable mentions out there. Um, and, you know, I, I tried not to have, you know, too, too many um you know repeats certainly of players because there's so many options but you know in one case i just i i couldn't i couldn't not have another one and that meant leaving off some pretty epic cards like some of the 1925 to 28 dollar cards out of argentina of greats like um you know you have stabil you have um uh, orsi uh scaroni um you, you know i i just so 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 hard um you know, and, and even in the 1920s, we get cards like Middlebow, um, who who doesn't have any cards in 1910s because of the wars, but he, he ends up going to play in, in Europe and ultimately, uh, you know, has some cards there, as well as, you know, Renzo De Vecchi, one of the first Italian greats, also has cards in the 20s, but doesn't have any cards there. But anyway, listen... It's my list, and again, the fun part about this to me is also hearing your perspective. What did I miss? What else is out there that people should care about? What are the truly epic pieces of cardboard from the 1920s? So uh, I'm gonna try to give you uh, my 10, and we'll have this nice graphic slide off the screen. I'm liking that. So in number 10 place, we're gonna go with probably the best keeper of his generation, Ricardo Samora. Uh, I've seen some interesting articles that kind of compare his goals against uh, ratio and, and kind of tries to to do like a Bill James, a statistical analysis where they, they go back and say, hey, how much better was he than other people when you kind of adjust for the amount of goals scored in a game and many other factors. And the reality is this guy was amazing and if you're a goalkeeper collector even if you're a fashion collector with these nice sweaters he'd carry around this doll he was a hell of a character you know he he uh hawked liquor and uh, he was just an amazing guy and he was really important in the world of football there are cards of him from central america to south america he shows up in african cards he's you know all over you know spain where he played uh, you know, time there, but he's also in German sets. So I would highly recommend getting some Ricardo Samora cards. This to me is one of my favorites. Um, it's just so beautiful. It's that Art Deco Spanish uh, style that I was telling you earlier. These cards were, were manufactured um, 
for chocolate companies mostly and then these chocolate companies would ha put their stamps on it this particular one is a la confianza and just look at how beautiful i mean it's so hard not to just love these cards at this and this card he's actually playing for um for um espanol so you know but i just man this card so hard not to love it so that's the number 10. so now let's go into uh number nine and this is hard because um you know i think there's you know i i, I would argue that uh hector ascarone was is probably a more important player than luis monti um and and certainly i think uh IFFHS would agree. I think they have him in the top 40 of, uh, of all time players. And, you know, the only thing is his, his ultra plus card, you know, is kind of far away. You can't really, you know, see his face. Um, and Luis Monti is also hugely important playing for his native Ar Argentina, winning the silver medal in 28, uh, being the runner up in the first world cup and, and 30, in 1930 in Uruguay uh, and then he was dual citizen so he moved it to Italy like uh, Orsi did and you know he ultimately wins the World Cup in 1934 for Italy uh, and then plays you know a pretty long career uh, for Juventus I, I believe so um you know he's he's kind of an epic dual citizen player at the kind of talks to this unique time in in the game where you know, players played for different, you know, countries uh, as well. And this card is just drop-dead gorgeous. It's the photographic card. It comes from a super rare series plus ultra cigarettes um, in, you know, from Argentina. It's got a great back, you know. The, again, these are, this is so hard. This 1920s decade, it's just so hard. So, um, in... Let's see. So that was 10, 9. In eighth place, I'm going to go with this Chocolate Orthi card of Alcantara. Uh, I could easily put another one that looks very much like the uh, like the Ricardo Samora La Confianza with different backs because I love those. And by the way, there's a painted version. There's a photographic type version. Uh, the one that I showed you on Samora is more of a photographic version. Here for uh, Chocolates Orthi, what I love about this card, and I just, I just can't get enough of it, is if you look closely, you may be able to see some lines all around, and that's because this card is actually a punch out card, where you could flip him, you could push him from this direction, you could bend this bottom, see this line right here, this bottom line, and you would have a stand-up Alcantara kicking the ball. So to find an unpunched one from the 1920s it just blows my mind. It's beautiful. It's artistic. The detail in all of these, you know, and all of this printing is just insane. You know, so again, one of the most important players in Barcelona's history one of the highest all-time scorers one of the greatest asian players ever and and a, just an epic piece of of cardboard here on the chocolates orthy um so let's go on to um let's see that was 10 9 8 7 lucky number seven is the captain of the great uruguayan teams of 24, 28, and 30, winning, bringing home two gold medals um, and the first ever uh, World Cup. And, you know, there's so many to pick up. There's an Eduardo Pie 24 oversized card that, you know, is probably his rookie. I think we could easily consider that, you know, one of the more important cards. But for me, these crack cigarillos are just so nice. Again, I love this back super hard to find these are photographic cards so they, they they you know reflect and it's just an amazing artifact that these things even existed so you've got he's got other cards from the 1920s you know um and he's got some 1930s for titan and and uh 
and you know he's got some some discs so he has many many cards you could choose from i just i just gravitate to this uh this crack but you can't go wrong with any of them i think incredibly underrated still massive superstar of the early game historically important player and you know i think that um that you know he, he's gonna get some hobby love at some point we've seen others like uh Sindelar, we've seen others like mesa um you know we've seen many other other guys um you know meredith get some love and you know i think that Nasasi really is the one that uh, has been left behind in this conversation and his teammates from from the 24 28 30 world cup team uh notably one to come up here um in in a second and that second has arrived and you could easily pick any of the jose andrade cards this particular one is a uruguayan issue it's very kind of small cards there's one for every player on the team from 1928 um, and you know, it's just a great photo. He was one of the, the first mega, um, uh, black superstars in the game. Yes. There were other players that played in England before Arthur Wharton, um, you know, Clark, uh, you know, in Brazil, you have, um, Arthur Frederick. So, you know, you, you, you have a bunch of players, but this is the guy that stood on the podium at two Olympic games and the 1930 World Cup. So all those players were great and should be recognized, followed, and and, uh, and documented in history. But there's no more important player, and I would argue better player, uh, for, for the impact of the game than Andrade. And, and later he would have his his nephew uh, be part of the Uruguayan team as well and and um, actually be part of the Maracanazo in the 1950 World Cup, where Uruguay again captures glory and uh, and and you know basically sends sends uh, uh, Brazil into uh, complete depression, the entire country. So this card, you know, he's got other many cards. He's got a crack. I didn't want to have two of the same issues. He's got um, you know some other Uruguayan issues. This particular one, I just really love, and it's so hard to pick any of his cards because they're all so. Uh, amazing so um again th- this is this is really hard homework so you know when when i'd love to hear some of your th- your guys's thoughts as you get there um so we have the next one on the list which is uh uh number five i think is the yusep mesa um you know, and, th- and this is a Lorati. So, so this is, this is tough because, you know, Mesa is clearly one of the most, you know, important players. Um, of, actually, to this day, I think there's still many, many people that make a case that he was the best Italian player ever. And that's really saying something given how many great Italian players uh, Italy has had, how many World Cups they've won. You know, he was, you know, just... R- allegedly just silky with the ball. He was just, you know, something really special. Um, and he starts, you know, in the early twenties and goes through, you know, the late, uh, you know, thirties. Um, his, his rookie card is a bit of, um, is under contention. I would say there's, there's some people that believe that, um, a card of him dribbling, um, which actually unfortunately don't have, but I'll make a Mesa uh, video. Um, is his rookie card, and others think that that card is issued uh, as late as 1930. I don't have a strong opinion. I hear both sides, and, and I tend to think it's actually earlier rather than later, uh, based on some of the 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 um, ba- based on some of the evidence that I've seen. Uh, but what you're not going to hear a lot of people argue is that this is one of his first early cards, and I would argue probably one of the more attractive ones. He's got a number of inaction ones where you can see him and you can make him out, but they're smaller and and it's hard to really, you know, love that as much as you can here where you can see just every detail of such a young budding superstar. He looks just like a kid here and he was in 1927. He's also got some 1928 uh, essays and some other ones. And then you start to get into the 30 where there's a whole bunch of unknown um, chocolate issues that come out that many use the same pictures or some deviations of the pictures. We'll get into those in more detail. 
but you know this is one of these late 70s late 20s you know cards where you just look at it and you say man that is epic this is like definitely one of the last pieces leaving the collection when you're talking about such an icon um in in what is um mesa i was just gonna look up here quickly i think they have him iff uh iffhs actually have mesa as the 21st best player ever um and you know by far they only have a handful of players that um are pre-war so that just tells you i think a top end soccer has him as the 37th best player ever so if you don't um if you don't really follow uh him or have have followed him you know do some research and see if he should go into your collection um the next one man th th these lists get so hard because you know here is the the arthur F frederich um you know i think that he's another one of these guys who really started playing in the teens and um you know he he is important not just because what he did on the on the field but you know he's the first mixed race um player i think his dad was german if i'm not right and 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 uh, his mom was um of african descent brazilian and so he's a mixed race player i think he had the nickname the black pearl there's a lot of controversy on how many goals that he sold but many sources have him uh, scoring more than a thousand goals so one of the all-time most important goal scorers in brazilian uh history um, regardless of that actual number, I think IFFHS has him as like, you know, 300 goals and like, you know, th or 350 and like 320 games. So regardless of any way you cut it, prolific, important, um, you know, player and really hard, you know, to find. I wish there were more issues from Brazil from the 20s. He has some issues that spill into the 30s where he's still playing well past his his um, his prime. And here he's still on the, um, the Brazilian national team in the mid twenties, uh, where he shows up in an Argentine, um, an Argentine set, uh, the dollar set. So it's kind of ironic that the only dollar card that I'll have on my top ten list, even though there are so many amazing, um, amazing cards from the from the series, is a Brazilian. Uh, a, a very very ironic to me. Um, these backs are beautiful. In Rafael Breton's book. He generally puts these all from a 1925 to 28. I think if you do a little bit of homework in terms of, um, you know, uniforms um, and other facts, you can narrow some down. Some are clearly going to be 1928 because they're Olympic related. Um, and some of these earlier first first ones are going to be closer to 1925, especially when you when you bake in what you know about the player. So, um, gosh, I mean, it's almost like when you see a card like that, you're like, okay, what could be better? Um, and that's where really hard to say. So uh, let's try this one. Maybe you guys think that this one is better. So here's the Dixie Dean um, rookie. And this is 1925. So, you know, he would go on to glory, become the Babe Ruth of soccer. I, I like we how we say that, scoring 60 goals. Um, what, two seasons after this photo is taken? Um, you know, I really like these DC Thompson adventure uh, cards look at the back there when i first started collecting about you know 10 12 years ago actually yeah, i'm more like 12 plus i guess at this point um you know people told me this was an easy card to get um and i've never felt that at all uh, i actually find it to be quite a difficult card and i would say that um if you find this card i would definitely be picking it up that said uh please keep in mind that these cards are photographic in nature so two things that you need to know about that. There are some, I've seen some fake cards that are completely matte and will will have like, you know, pixelations on it. This particular, you know, card is completely photographic. And because of that, almost all of the versions I see have this slight bend, which you can't fully appreciate where the, 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 the photographic edges you know, kind of start to stand up a little bit. I'd almost call it curling, but you know, it's not really curling and really hard to see, but it's slight. And if you hold these in your hand, you'll be able to notice again, photographic cards 
and you know what? They're hard to grade. This may be the highest grade PSA copy out there. Maybe there's a five, but you know, a four is is a really good grade. So don't don't worry too much about oh, I want a nine or a ten. <laughs> you you're you're in the wrong business, so to speak, if you're looking for those. But you know, the Dixie Dean rookie card slightly edges out the Arthur Frederick for me. So, like, what in the world could be better? Then, you know, those cards. Well, the number two card on the list for me has to be this uh, Greeling uh, Sindelar card. Just like Mesa, I think that, that Sindelar is is very uh, well recognized from a historical perspective on his soccer importance, um, even more so from his cultural um, importance in terms of standing up for the Nazis and uh, standing up to the Nazis and his subsequent um, questionable um, death, um, you know, which, which uh, the, the official version is it may have been carbon uh, monoxide uh, poisoning and a complete accident. And the more um, nefarious thought is that it could be, it could have been the SS who didn't like uh, his refusal number one to play for the German uh, team and his uh, basically embarrassing them when in the last friendly, when Germany reunited Austria as part of the um, uh, Germany, it, uh, you know, he, he scored a winning goal and basically, you know, mocked uh, the Nazis. And, you know, the Wonder Team um, was, you know, probably going to be a favorite in the, um, in the 1938 World Cup. They were, I think they came in third place in 34 um they had a ton of momentum and he's really at the heart of the team um Sindelar. now this this uh sgc grades this is 1926 it's you know probably um 26 to 29 uh if i had to guess the best guess right now i'd probably say 1928 regardless by far it it, it predates the bulgarian uh, sport and other issues that you have. So I think in many, for, for all practical purposes, you need to call this his rookie card. Uh, last time I checked, PSA had, had never graded a copy and SGC had graded two. Um, you know, I don't think when you're talking about rarities with such amazingly important, you know, players, I think that just by the sheer definition that has to be um, considered you know, Epic Cardboard, which is the name of this channel. Uh, he is also number 22 of the best players of all time, according to IFFHS, uh, and that was one behind Mesa. So, you know, you, you just see Epic level uh, player here and and uh, card. And the number one from the 1920s, such, such a tough um, decision to make. And the only duplicate, again, and I'm sorry to all these great players, you know, Seiya from uh, Argentina, Orsi from Argentina, and, um, I mean, Seiya from Uruguay, um, you know, Orsi from, from Argentina and um, Italy. But I, I just, I got to pick this card. It's not a rookie, but to me, this is one of the last cards that would go out of my collection. I just, I find everything about this card just magical. Um, the, the, the typesetting, you know, the player, the, the back. I mean, this, this to me is just like so special in terms of its artistic value. And when you couple in the importance of the player and being, in this uh, Stagni, what do they call it, Petazzoni um, collection, which dates from 1927 to 29. Look at this back. Just beautiful. You know, I just, I look at this thing and I'm like, insane, insane. One of the top cards in my collection. I mean, clearly it's not the most valuable card in my collection, but the... You know, this this is why I collect. You find special items like this that just, you know, speak to you. And I think this is the avatar that I use on my my um, my YouTube channel, Epic Cardboard. 
Uh, you'll also notice that on the border that I use for my videos, <laughs> there are uh, three cards on my border from the 1920s. So you've got the Dixie Dean, you've got the, the Sindelar, and you've got the, um, the Mesa. And of course, all three of those make it to the top, float to the top of the most important cards of the 1920s so uh there's there's some clues in my in my border about some of the cards that you'll see uh as we march through the decades and some of them you've, you've already seen um but you know this one is, is kind of towards the top of the mountain um you know i i'm i'm not 100 percent sure it makes it into the top 10 of all time of all the cards but um but you know it's certainly from an artistic value um you know, I think that it has to. It's just a piece of epic cardboard. So I hope that you've enjoyed uh, this video. And if you have, if you made it this far, please smash that like button. Please comment. I, I really want to hear if you guys think that these are really good options or if they are not and which other cards you'd put. So many great cards from the 1920s that needed to be left out uh, because now the game is getting much more international and one of the exciting things that, that I find about, about you know, time from these 1920s now is there's so much diversity of collectibles. And it makes it so much fun. Complicated, but so much fun. Hopefully you learned something today. Hopefully you like some of these things and you put them on your want list and, and you can ultimately add them to your collection. And uh, looking forward to your comments. And we'll certainly uh, see you guys next time. Thanks so much.